Yeah, well, the six string is, is quite easy to answer because uh, we had a piano at home and we had a guitar when, when I was a child. And uh, I didn't really like the piano, so I thought it would be more fun to play the guitar. So I start, started playing uh, when I was like six years old. And um, well, to answer your question about the 11 string, my teacher played the 11 string guitar. Who was that? That was uh, Per Olof Jonsson. In Stockholm? In Malmö and mm -hmm. in uh, Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. So I heard him playing this uh, instrument and I thought, uh, well, that's cool. It's nice, nice sound. And uh, I've always been interested in early music. Uh, so I bought my first one in 1973 already. Mm -hmm. And did you start to play it right away or a mix of six and 11 strings? How was it? Yeah, I, I started to, to play it right away and, and tried to learn how to, you know, the first year I, I had to watch all the time my, my thumbs to, to find all these bass strings, which was quite tricky. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, you get used to it. I mean, lute players, they, they learn it and uh, we are not more stupid than, than lute players. So, so, so we, can, we can also learn new things, you know. But uh, you were always playing more the 11 strings or you were shifting back and forth between 6 and 11 at that time, in the beginning? Yeah, well, all the time I, I think I think I, I played uh, like two thirds uh, six string guitar and one third of my concerts uh, on the 11 string, mm -hmm. something like that. But uh, like here in Koblenz, if I go to a guitar festival, I think it's, it's much more uh, fun and much more interesting if I bring an instrument that uh, not everyone else is playing. I think uh, my teacher, he, he had prepared me quite well, so I had a lot of uh, repertoire, a lot of pieces already ready to, to play. And uh, so when I won the competition in, in Paris, I, I was kind of prepared to, to go on tour, but um, I was extremely lucky actually, because uh, there was a guy from the Swedish radio uh, making interviews and uh, things about uh, the, the competition in Paris. So the next day after I won the competition, it was in the news, radio, television, the newspapers, everywhere in Sweden what was the news that uh, Wow, that we have a, a Swedish guitarist who won, some, they call it the World Championship sometimes, and, and that, like that, you know. And it, it was a big thing. And uh, then uh, I was contacted by Deutsche Grammophon, and, uh, which was uh, also very good for me, of course. I, I understand that that first recording went the top of the charts in Sweden yeah, as well. It was even, I was even before ABBA. Really? Yes, which made me really <laughs> proud. <laughs> so you went into the pop charts? Yes, I was. I think it was like number five or six in the pop charts. Playing Bach, Saw? Yeah, that's the way to do it. That's great. Yeah. And so immediately after that you started to tour and then your career took off. Yeah, exactly. And then and I, I have tried to, to build my career uh, around uh, the recordings very much mm -hmm. because uh, I'm basically a family guy I, I want to stay home with my family and so it's, it's much it's better that the, 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 the recordings that the LPs and the CDs records that they, they travel instead. Maybe everyone says this, that uh, I, I never practiced that much. <laughs> so, so, but uh, I have to say the same. I, I, I tried, the first year after Paris, I tried to practice four hours a day and I got completely crazy. It was terrible. So uh, I think it's, it's, of course, it's much better to practice two hours and really be 100% focus. But what happened when you say it was, uh, it was terrible? What, what was terrible about it? The last hour I was just looking at, uh, at the clock, to, 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 waiting for it to finish, mm -hmm. because I wanted to go to the golf course instead. 
<laughs> what I do, I practice very slowly mm -hmm. to, to reduce all the not necessary movements. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we are doing a lot of unnecessary movements when we, when we play. And if we can reduce these, I think we, we can make much, life much easier. The truth is that uh, once my teacher tried to make me play a study by someone, mm -hmm. I think it was Tarja, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> I felt so terrible, so bad, <laughs> so he never tried again. So, so I, I, everything I've learned, I've learned through, through playing pieces. About the scales, the ligados, yeah, the pages. There is always a scale in, in, uh, in most pieces. But you never really took one hour just to practice scales and no, pages, that kind of thing. No. Maybe I should have. But you know, I, I have I play with a with a little different technique because uh, I play usually I play the scales with the thumb and the index, mm -hmm. like the lute players, mm -hmm. because I, I found that much easier. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if when I play concerto de Aranjuez, mm -hmm. I play everything with the thumb index. Mm -hmm. I feel. It's almost like a rock guitarist, you know, with a black drum. <laughs> I, I, actually, I, I, I used to, for, for recording, I, I, I usually worked like a year or so. I really prepared my recordings in, in a very... Uh, detailed. I, yeah, very detailed, really. Because I know when I'm there, I mean, normally it's quite expensive to rent the studio or church or whatever. And uh, normally I, I did all my CDs in, in two and a half days. And uh, so I should be able, I had to be able to play every note, really to play the pieces uh, without making too many mistakes and so on. So uh, I, I, I use, usually prepare a lot. The recordings I like most are the ones where I really uh, learned the piece for, for the recording. Because it, it is a little bit... Sometimes I get bad habits if I play a piece in concert too many times. I try to make new things and uh, things that are, are, are not... Uh, well, maybe to catch the listener, to catch the audience. And uh, to play in front of a microphone is, is a little bit different. I try to, to always uh, start from zero when, when I approach a new piece. Really not, not to... just to, to try to... when I start playing to... Just so you don't have a preconceived idea? You approach I, it with a fresh mind? Yes. I think the, the, that's more, much more fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, normally it, uh, after a while uh, I, it works. And has it happened to you that you recorded something 20 years ago and then you know you approach it today, you say, I want to do everything different? <laughs> well, it doesn't happen that many times. I think I mean, maybe I'm, I see it that way that uh, the old recordings uh, were made by a young Joran Solskjaer, mm -hmm. and now a little bit. Now I'm 60, so, so of course it would be very strange if, if I if I would do it the same way now. Mm -hmm. But uh, the old ones are, are documents. From uh, I did my best for each recording, and uh, normally it, uh, for for most of my recordings. Uh, I have no problems listening to them. Sometimes it's like listening to another person, but uh, sometimes I like that person also. I mean, when I was a child, I, I or when I was young, I only, I just all only listened to pop music. It was the Beatles and. Uh, all these pop groups and, and so on. So I, um, I, I, I never listened to classical music, actually. And then I, I got the record uh, 
with Segovia, where he plays this, this the wonderful old LP where he plays uh, Tarrega and Fernando Sor, mm -hmm. Capriccio Arata. So. Mm -hmm. Then I thought, oh, this is what, what a beautiful sound. And then it started. <laughs> Maybe, maybe I, I try to keep my music always quite clean. That, that's the way I, I, I am. That's the way I, I prefer food. That's the way I prefer life. Uh, not too messy. That, that's why we live in the countryside, uh, very far away from everything. Uh, well, not, not too far away from golf course, of course. But, uh, <laughs> But what I do for inspiration, I, I listen a lot to uh, good colleagues and uh, good musicians. Not necessarily guitarists, but uh, other musicians, uh, how they play. And I, I, I don't, I really prefer to be a good musician than to be a good guitarist. <laughs> I'm absolutely sure that uh, I would not be here if Segovia would not have played his, all, his, all his concerts and things like that. So uh, I, I, I can thank him for, for my life as a musician. And what was his uh, influence on you, if at all? He had an influence on everyone because he had such a great love to music. And uh, he, he expressed that uh, through his uh, amazing guitar playing and I mean, to have, the, I mean, the sound he produced and uh, his self-confidence, uh, which made him play uh, it, concert after concert with, with uh, the best result, I, I think it, it's amazing. And the energy to learn new pieces. And uh, I mean, we, we cannot tell how many pieces he, he, he premiered mm -hmm. over the years, and I think when people say that, oh, he didn't play enough contemporary music and he didn't blah, 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 and do this and this and this. I mean, he was one person and he was traveling. If he would go to America from Europe, he would have to sit, sit a week on the boat. I mean, I mean, how much can one person do, actually? I think he did much more than anyone else for the guitar. has been all the time a big source of, of inspiration is this uh, incredible energy that he has and uh, his way of uh, treating the guitar with, with uh, different kinds of, of, uh, of sound uh, is, is just amazing I think uh, and my, my teacher Per Olof Jonsson was uh, also inspired me very very much Mm -hmm. Because he, he, he had the, the vision that, that uh, we should uh, play good music in, in a good way. We should not depend on, on what is possible to do on the guitar. We should not be a slave under, under the guitar technique, but we, we should have a, an idea of the music in our brain and then we should make the technique do that. And uh, that's how I still work, actually. One big advantage of, of being at uh, a record company like uh, Deutsche Grammophon is, of course, that uh, uh, that they want people to to play together with the other artists mm -hmm. at Deutsche Grammophon. So, I mean, I, I I was able to play and to record with musicians I would never, probably, never have met otherwise. Maybe. The, the greatest one is the violinist, the Gil Shaham, who I think is <clears throat> one of the top three violinists in the world. I mean, he's such an incredible musician. And we, we have played a lot of concerts and uh, we did two, two CDs together, one with Paganini and one with uh, uh, Schubert. Yeah, and it sold so many copies. We, could, it, we couldn't really uh, imagine how was this possible? It sold like... I, and we found out that it sold a lot of copies in South Korea. 
when I came there at, and at the airport, and uh, um, um, I asked uh, the taxi driver on the way into the hotel to, uh, okay, do you know anything in any music by Paganini? And then he sang to me one of the pieces from Gills and my CD. <laughs> it, it turned out that that uh, that that, uh, that piece had been. Uh, the theme, uh, the, the music to us, to the most popular soap opera in in, uh, in uh, South Korea. Mm -hmm. So everyone knew this piece, and uh, <laughs> that's quite fun. So, but to to play it together with 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 musicians like like him or to, with uh, Jiang Wan, a fantastic Chinese cellist, and, uh, or or first cha chamber orchestra in New York, where I recorded. Uh, some guitar concertos with, uh, I mean, the, of course that's a big, big inspiration for me, and also a, a big challenge, because uh, to play Schubert with uh, Gil Shahan and and play maybe a piano part, you you really have to to do it well. Otherwise, he would say, What's no, this? I get a, a piano player instead. Mm -hmm. Always played like, like uh, some Beatles songs just for fun, for for friends and so on. Uh, then uh, in the late eighties, I started to play sometimes uh, a Beatles song as encore, and uh, it was the, the head of Deutsche Grammophon in Japan, a man named uh, Makoto Shina, Shinohara. Uh, he heard me doing it in, in a concert in Tokyo. And he, he, he said, why don't you do a whole CD with Beatles songs? And I thought, well, yeah, why don't I? <laughs> it would be fun. And then, uh, so, so uh, I started working a little bit, but uh, you know, in, in, in these days, the Deutsche Grammophon didn't cross over, it was not the, the kind of thing that they were doing. So I had to really to convince or, or them that uh, that I have to do this thing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, normally, I'm not pushing myself really very much, but in this case, I, I did it. So finally, they said, "Okay, stop <laughs> talking about it. You you can do it, but you do it on your own risk." They said. <laughs> but it's all. What does that mean? I, I I don't I don't want to know what it meant. <laughs> Probably, if if it would be a disaster, uh, they could get another guitarist instead. Mm -hmm. But uh, they, it, it went very well. Um, I never worked uh, that much for any other recording, making, writing arrangements, collecting arrangements, uh, studying. So really... A lot of work. It was a lot of work, it was a lot of fun. Because I, I grew up with this music. I, I... And, uh, and then you did a second one. Yeah. With uh, George Martin. Where, how did you meet him? I met him, uh, uh, he was conducting the symphony orchestra in Malmö, in the south of Sweden, which is also the city uh, where I teach uh, mm -hmm. at, the Royal, at the academy. Um, and um, they were performing, of course, Beatles songs with the symphony orchestra, and he was conducting. And uh, then, uh, like a week or so before the concert, uh, well, they wanted me to join in and play some. Then he sent me uh, his guitar concerto, three American sketches, which uh, uh, I think John is the only one who has the music also, mm -hmm. and because he recorded it with a string quartet. And um, so I learned it very quickly, and, uh, and we played it in the concerts, and uh, we became very good friends. And, uh, Great composer, Bach. a musician that I really admire. Nigel no, North. When I'm not playing the guitar, the thing that I like to do most is spend time with my family. If I had not been a guitarist, I would have chosen to be. Uh, I'm very interested in weather things, so meteorologists, maybe. A public figure that I admire. It's not a very unique answer, but uh, I would like to say Nelson Mandela. The most interesting place I have ever been to is? 
uh, Istanbul. Of all my recordings, my favorite ones are uh, Eleven String Baroque, maybe, and uh, Schubert for two together with Gil Shaham. Mm -hmm. 